Discover hope and healing from the other side. Welcome to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to another episode. It's the first Thursday in April 2022, and the first Thursday for the last, well, I don't know how long, has been Ask Suzanne and Sanaya Day. So I am thrilled to see the board is lighted up and filled with callers. We'll get to as many of you as we can, but I think we won't get to everybody if people keep calling in now. I want to let you know that we only have two more shows, this one and next week, with Unity Online Radio. Word has gotten out that the radio network is disbanding, but that's okay. All of my past shows are being transferred over to a new podcast platform. They'll continue to be available in all of the major podcast ways that people listen to those. And I'll be doing new shows live and then put into podcasts afterwards with guests, but also with this call-in format. So stay tuned. If you're on my email list, you'll be notified. And we have a special page now for my podcast on my website where you can go now and subscribe so that I'll send out an email every time before I'm about to broadcast live. The thing is, with Unity Online Radio, I've been doing these shows every Thursday at 4 o'clock Eastern Time weekly, but the podcast is going to be more according to my schedule, which is going to make it a lot easier for Ty and me when we're traveling around the country. But I'll still be doing frequent shows, so I'll try to make it handy times for all of you listening. Go to SuzanneGiesman.com slash podcast and there's a button there where you can sign up and i'll just send you that brief email so that you can watch live on facebook or youtube for those of you who don't have facebook no worries we're going to get the bases covered and then like i said that will be put into a podcast so i hope you'll join me and we will just continue i'll have the same theme song the same settings everything so let's keep this community growing meanwhile got some of you on the line there. Please, today, will your questions be those that the answers will apply to everybody listening, not personal readings, as always. And one lucky caller is going to get, is going to win one of my online courses. So I'm going to put the caller's name on a little sheet of paper here and do a drawing at the end of the program. So let's get going here with our first guest. We have Shannon. Thanks for your patience, because I know you've been waiting a little while. You are on the air, and welcome to the show. Hi. Hi. Can you hear me? I can, and I'm putting your name on a piece of paper before I forget. This is an amazing opportunity. Um, Thank you so much. I just found you about a month ago. Uh, My mom passed away January 23rd of COVID, and um, before that, we had always said that we, uh, we needed a sign to give each other in case one of us passed. So we knew that, you know, if we saw this sign, that it was, you know, it was the other one just checking in and being around. And we never got the opportunity to name that sign because she passed suddenly. Oh, God. Um, so I, um, I had a reading yesterday with a medium. And prior to my reading, I spoke to my mom multiple times through meditation, which I am very new to, thanks to you. I'm really, really trying all of your techniques. Good, good. Um, But Mm -hmm. I am really trying very hard to connect with her, and I'm not good at it yet, and I don't expect to be. Um, How? Go ahead. Watch that. Watch those expectations. You should expect to be, okay? Uh, We'll talk about that, but go ahead with your question. You're right. Um, So I talk to her through meditation and just in regular living during the day. And prior to the reading, I asked her to please um, bring up a couple of things that are very, very specific through the reading so I know that she's hearing me. Good. So I had the reading, and while it was um, heartwarming and it did provide me some closure that I did not get, she didn't bring up any of the specific things that I asked her to bring up. So it set me back in my confidence a little that maybe she's not hearing me. Okay. So this is just an outstanding topic to discuss, Shannon, for everybody. 
I give my clients a little read ahead sheet before a meeting reading that says, please do not be waiting for your loved one to give you that one thing, or in your case, those three things. There are a couple reasons for that. Number one, every thought, every word has a specific frequency. So if your medium can't tune into that very specific frequency, they are not going to hear that word or see that visual. Whereas your loved ones may be trying really hard to get through whatever that medium can pick up on. Also, you tuning in only to those specific things tends to allow us, cause us to miss things that are coming through that are meaningful. It sounds like you've got some meaningful things, but nothing that was what we call a gold nugget piece of evidence. So it could be that your mom is still a little bit new to communicating. But asking for those specific things as much as we would love them, sometimes we get them, but please don't ever make it be the test of whether or not you actually communicated with your mom or whether or not she's trying. I teach all of my students and all of my clients, the test of a good reading was, is, do you leave that reading and say, that was my mom, I know it. So... If that didn't happen yesterday, then it just wasn't as clear a connection as you would have liked. Don't give up. Again, it could either be uh, just the medium was not the right, tuning into the right frequency, not maybe not the greatest match, or your mom isn't a good enough communicator yet, or whatever. There could be various reasons, but perhaps you might want to look for a medium who also is trained in evidence-based mediumship. But again, I even tell people that come to me, please don't look for that one thing because you may be disappointed. There have been times when I've gotten that one thing. Somebody has brought me three things with their mom and it's somebody I'm very close to. I knew her when she was here. And as content as I am with my connection, I still haven't even gotten from somebody very close to me. And you just have to realize that's just the nature of this communication and be thrilled with when they get truly verifiable evidence and their essence across to you. Okay. 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 I understand. And, um, thank you. Thank you so much for, um, somebody guided me to you and I, I give my mom that credit. So, um, I thank you and her and, uh, especially I'm honored to be on your last show here on unity online radio and um, thank you for giving me the tools that I need to connect with my mom. Well, that's the goal. And so let's go back to what you said at the beginning. I don't really expect to get her clearly. Get rid of that because we never know. And you are a soul, Shannon. All of us are souls. And it's the soul-to-soul -soul communication that we make with each other. The human side, yeah, we might have our failings. But the souls can connect and are connected right now. So just... Let's use this new phrase. Wouldn't it be awesome if I opened up a really clear connection with my mom? And that way you're open to anything. How about a miracle mindset? It's going to be amazing. And I am devoted to increasing my connection with her. I'm not going to give up until we connect. How's that? You're right. You're absolutely right. Thank you. Right. All right. Thank you for calling in. Thanks so much. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Right. That was a Good subject and so important. Okay, we're going to go on to Mary. You are on the show. Welcome. Hi, Anne. Oh, Anne. Hi, Anne. Thanks for taking my call. You're welcome. Um, I, used, I used to visit Lilydale, uh, New York on occasion over the decade. And um, years ago, I even took a class at Ann Gaiman's house when... Um, her husband, Wayne Moore, was alive, and they lived in Falls Church, Virginia. So I'm familiar with readings and the like. And um, my question is, is, I've been meditating for, you know, up to about at least two decades now. and But lately, I don't know what it is. It's like something's changed. It's, I feel like an anxiety is coming through my body, and I, I, I can't be still, and I can't put my finger on what could be going on where... I used to get insights and feelings, and, and, and it was wonderful, but now it's like things are jumbled up. Is this something normal, or is there a problem with my frequency, with the 
All right. What I just got, and I forgot to acknowledge and thank my wonderful team of guides, Sanaya, who's right here with us, but they just snagged me as you were talking and they said, collective consciousness. Look at what's going on in our world. You think there's a little anxiety here? Oh, yes. Yeah. So very, very important to clear the vessel before we meditate. I did that before this show. I just finished a reading less than an hour ago, and I was just a little bit off balance from that one. And because things got discombobulated with Zoom at the beginning. So I just sat here and did my 10-minute transformation meditation. I do my own meditations that I have online. Uh, that one can be found on the gifts page on my website. But any method to clear your chakras And then I like to take a shower of white light, as silly as it sounds. Just remember, everybody, I'm the retired Navy commander. So I have taught neurologists, doctors, psychiatrists, all kinds of people, physicists, to take an imaginary shower of light because the intention of clearing yourself this way works. So whatever works to just clear out any anxiety, even if it's not your own. So it doesn't have to be anything wrong with you. And then oh, it's wonderful you picked up on that white light because that's something I had written down on this piece of paper that I can't seem to find it. No matter how much I try to envision it, it's just not coming through. And I don't know if, I, like you say, clear these blockages. If I've tried sage, burning sage, you know, all stuff. I don't know what's going on. Well, the most important thing to keep in mind, everybody, is we are that light. What's getting in the way is our human stuff, which has been very tumultuous for a couple of years now. It's just one thing after another. The light doesn't go away. It's what breathes you. It is you. It's your essence. So just finding it is a matter of uh, excavating all the human stuff that's overlaying that. And again, not that there's anything wrong with you or any of us. We've just been going through a lot. So acknowledge it, set it aside, and just dissolve into the light that's already right here. Gotcha. Well, thanks again for taking my call and have a good day. You are welcome. And Mary was talking at the beginning about Lilydale. That's a spiritualist community where they train mediums, where mediums live. I had my uh, first class of mediumship there after going to Lilydale to interview medium and Gaiman for my very first mediumship book, The Priest and the Medium, that was Anne Gaiman's biography. She recently passed, and Wayne Knoll passed. It is a beautiful, beautiful love story and a beautiful story about mediumship and how a medium married a priest and their beliefs, though differing, didn't get in the way of their love. So it's really funny because people read that book, well, they read the title, The Priest and the Medium, and they see that I wrote it, and they think that my husband, Ty, is a former priest, and that cracks us up immensely. (laughs) He's a retired Navy ship captain. Okay, let's move on to Betty. Welcome to the show. Hi, Suzanne. Thank you so much for taking my call. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. How can we help you today? So I, I have a question that's similar. It's a similar experience as to the first caller. I'm not feeling after meditating for quite a while, the connection with um, a parent. Um, My parent, actually, um, my father died 19 years ago, and then two years after that, my brother died at a young age. Um, And so I was wondering, how long did it take you to feel that you were connecting to your daughter-in-law when you would meditate? I feel like I, I'm starting to kind of this human side of me saying, well, maybe you don't have the gift or maybe this isn't something you can do. And I, just from listening to your other calls and um, podcasts that we, you know, I do believe we all have, we all have the ability. I just am getting more discouraged because I'm not connecting. Okay. I totally understand that. And I have always hesitated to people to tell people how long it took me to connect because then I'm afraid that people might compare themselves with me. But I do feel it is worth sharing that the week that our Susan, my stepdaughter, passed, I began meditating that week knowing that I had to do that to connect with her. I just innately knew it. And do you know, it was 
at least two years before I made a connection with any spirit across the veil other than guides. And I believe it was three years until I sent Susan and I meditated every day. But here's the thing. Along the way, my intuition came back on board. I started knowing things about people and situations that before I had no way of knowing. I connected with my guides along the way. I learned things about myself. I would sit and cry with the bliss that I was experiencing meditation. So the journey itself was awesome, if not frustrating, because I wasn't sensing Susan. But Susan was doing a good job of sending us signs. If you've read my book, Messages of Hope, you know that she did that right from the beginning. And so I just never lost hope. And I had an awful lot of my own human side to get out of the way. It's been an ongoing journey. And I just like to tell everybody and you, of course, that if we give up, then nothing will happen. But it's just part of the journey to be persistent, devoted to this and keep talking to your loved ones, even if you don't sense anything in return. Work with your guides and ask them how else might my loved ones come through to me besides the way I'm expecting them to come through? Okay? Thank you very much. That was very, very helpful. I, it, I, um, it's given me hope to continue um, that it will happen. I just, um, it's putting aside that it's, gonna, that it's not happening right now. Exactly. Yep, yep. And again, it comes back to those expectations and assumptions and... I just like to hold the vision of our loved ones doing their best to communicate. You can just imagine them here. I'm trying, I'm trying, and we'll keep working on this together. Great. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Take care, and thanks for calling. Bye-bye. All right. Let me put my glasses on so I can read this next name. We have, that was Betty. We have Reed. Reed, welcome to the show. Hi, Suzanne. Hi. It's You're me. on the air. How can I help you? Well, there's a lot of questions, but I'll just pick one. Um, how do you, I guess, integrate things like the Buddhist view of the world into your experience as a medium? Okay. What I have found is that each one of us is on our unique path. Let me check with my guides on this one. You can look at many of the major religions and find the similarities. And that truly the bottom line is, does it matter what others believe or say? Your journey is unique to you. What speaks to your heart? What is your goal? goal in your own practice. So as a medium, what is my goal? To connect with those who are no longer in a body, to connect at a soul level, to show that the soul is eternal, to deliver accurate messages, to show that connection is what we share and that the connection, the love is ongoing. So you can find love and connection and a greater reality in most religions. I don't worry about things like right and wrong as far as good and bad, simply how does this help? Is it healing? Uh, can you say something on how desire can help us towards healing? Desire, how does desire help towards healing? The guides right now, say that the more powerful word would be intention. Intention is all important. So also they say surrendering to the greater good, even when one doesn't know what that might be. I'm reminded of my dear friend, Brenda, who is across the veil now, who had an amazing healing with, a, with an energy healer and it healed her at an emotional level. And yet the illness from which she passed was not healed. At the human level, we might say that she wasn't healed. And yet she talked to me within hours of her passing saying, I'm free. 
I was healed. It's allowing me to enjoy this experience now and to talk to you now as I am. But getting back to your original question, desire has a, has a dissonant energy to it. It has a neediness. And it's totally understandable from the human viewpoint. But intention is harnessing our true co-creative power when we set the intention at the broadest possible level that the greatest good be served, then you have a much better chance of achieving what you at the human level desire. Is that helpful? Yeah. Cool. Thanks for that. You're welcome. Thanks for calling, Reed. Take care. Yeah. Right. We look like we have enough time for another caller, so I appreciate everybody and your patience. Here's a name I recognize, and I'm going in order. So we will talk with Florida. Everybody remember Florida? She's called in before. How are you, my friend? I'm Suzanne. How are you? I so miss talking to you. I'm well, thank you. How are you? Doing great. Good to hear you. What's, exactly. what, is, what can we help you with today? Okay, so uh, three points I wanted to get your opinion on. When you were talking to, when you had your... Uh, meeting with Donald, Neil Donald Walsh. You were referring to God as gay, and uh, he was referring as she. Right. Is God what we choose to have him or her as, like male, female? Do we get to choose? Uh, um, wow, that is such a, a great question, and I want to. I'm going to turn this one over to my guide so that the wording comes out right. Do we get to choose? <laughs> this is part of the joy, the guides say, of being an embodiment, an expression of this creative source. You may call it what you want, and in that way, you do get to choose. But no matter what you call it, the source remains the same. So there you go. It doesn't matter what you call. So yes, you get to choose. And they say... Choose wisely, for words are limiting, and that which you are naming is nameless. Once you name it, you have already limited it. So become familiar with how this co-creative, intelligent, loving source, this flow, this presence feels. Do not need a word or a name to define it. Simply set the intention of coming to know yourself as an expression of it. Okay. Next, really quick. The, I've been following your program and following people who you've dealt with. So reading The Journey of Both, Michael Newton, and following Wayne Dyer. Do this, does the soul choose the sex it's born into? Yes, it does. I got a big lip twitch with that one. Those of you who will be watching this on YouTube after the live radio show will see that lip twitch as the guides say yes. That is one of the major choices that a soul chooses for the opportunities that it will afford the one in the body. So then soul is not a sex. It's just that we, neither, neither nor, correct? I'm sorry that we were chosen. I guess when we passed. I guess when we pass on, we go back to being, I guess, for lack of better words, neutral. Neither yes, because yes, you're androgynous without a body. You are the light. You are the presence. You are the flow of consciousness. The soul can take on whatever traits, characteristics, body it desires when it embodies. And it chooses that in advance is what the guides are saying. Love you, Suzanne. Thank you so much. I, love you. I have to tell you, Florida, if you go and watch this video afterwards, right as you began talking, I was pulled up to the left, and, and you may see me having a kind of aha moment. I just did a reading, as I said, an hour ago, and I suddenly was shown a tray of baklava. And everybody who's listening, Florida and I have never met, but she sent me uh, baklava treats for Christmas. And I saw that exact tray it didn't come up in the reading. I just, it was just in my awareness and probably because you were already thinking about tuning in today and I picked up on that. 
And then, last thing, I've been connecting with my mom, and I have you, and everything you've done to get me where I am. Thank you. Oh, Thank that, you very, very much. That is the best news ever. So, everybody who's listening, Florida came to my work because her mom passed, and we did have the opportunity for a reading, and it was just a lovely connection. And that's the goal of mediumship, just to show people that love never dies, that they are here. But my yeah. main goal is to help all of you learn to connect on your own. You don't have to become a medium, but to understand that we are souls and that's what makes this connection possible. So Florida, the fact that you're connecting with her, what a gift that is. It is. But let's think, how can I find out what I was or anybody, what we were intended to do? I love to help people. Yep, and so we're out of time, we have to go to a break, but uh, I can just tell you that everybody's purpose is the same, to learn to love each other fully, and after that, follow your passion, okay? Thank you, love you, bye-bye. We'll be right back after a quick break, everybody. Welcome back, you're listening to Messages of Hope with Suzanne Giesman. Hey everybody, we're back. I have been so busy lately. I have a monthly connection webinar coming up next Tuesday, the 12th. I do that every month and I've been going over my notes and compiling amazing evidence from the greater reality readings that, that just knock your socks off. I am so grateful for the kinds of gold nuggets we can get from across the veil and to show people that this is very, very real. I hope you can join me. Just check out right at the top of my homepage, SuzanneGiesman.com, right under the banner are all my upcoming events, have some retreats coming up, that monthly connection webinar. Would love to meet some of you in person at some of those. But meanwhile, talking to you in person is awesome. So the next person in line in the queue here is Cindy. Welcome to the show. Hi. Hey. Hello. You are on the air. Go ahead. How are you? I'm so excited. I listen to you all the time. Well, awesome. I love that people get happy to talk to me. I mean, who would have thought? <laughs> I'm calling to ask you if there, and I'm not sure if I can ask this, but does my mom have a message for me? You can ask that all you want, but I am not tuned into the spirit world right now. I am so on. I'm in. This is why this works this way. Okay. Let me tell you why. Because it sounds like an excuse. When I sit to do a reading, I am completely focused on my client and their loved ones in spirit. I take a moment to get quiet. I shift my focusness and boom, there we are. I talked to another read medium once and she called radio show readings, drive-by readings. Now, that sounds funny, but it's, it's kind of like that. Let, let's tune in and see if we can get a message. And it's, it, to me, it doesn't honor the sacredness of the depth of the connection I get when I do a reading. So I hesitate to give messages when I don't sense the spirits clearly when I'm talking in normal waking consciousness like we are right now. That's why. Okay. okay, that sounds good. But let's just hang on a second here. See, the problem is we have what we call in radio time, dead air time, which is not a good pun for a medium, right? Hey. But what I sense as I tune in is you don't have to feel bad about the manner of her passing. Now, see, I hear that, and I don't have evidence to back it up, but is that meaningful to you? Um, no. See? See? This is yeah. why I don't like doing this. I teach evidential mediumship. We get evidence. This is how your mom passed. This is the kind of work she did. This is her personality. Then when we get the messages, you can trust that that's coming from your loved one. In a quick radio show where you can tell I'm up, I'm on, I don't get the evidence that quickly because I wasn't ready to do that and I can't back right. up. But that's what I tuned into. So that is how I work and that's why we keep the questions related to everybody in this show. All right? Okay, thank you. 
I guess. I hope so. All righty. Thank you for calling, Cindy. Bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. All right. Now, I also want to tell you all something else. So one of the greatest things we can learn as mediums is to not let our human stuff get in the way. And right now, the human side of Suzanne is saying, why couldn't I do that? Why couldn't I get a message that was meaningful to her? And I have learned that I trust this connection world with the spirit, this connection with the spirit world so immensely that I have to be satisfied that this is the way it works for me. And so a lesson in not giving in to our human stuff that wants to say, well, you should have done that. Or just like those who called in earlier, well, I should have had a connection after all this time. We just trust the process and know that it unfolds perfectly for each of us in our own way. I know there are mediums out there who can do the instant readings like that, but I love the depth. I love the gold nuggets. And that's why I love my one-on-one -on -one readings. So let's move on to Bin C. I think you've been on the show before. We talked about your unusual name. Welcome back. Hi, Suzanne. Yes, we did talk. Thank you for taking me. Um, so I have a question. I guess it's in the opposite direction of what everybody else was asking. So when I sit down to meditate, I do use the bless me method. And I, I was, my intention is to connect with my guides, to connect with Archangel Michael, etc. And I get very strong what can I say, thoughts in my head, and I feel like I'm connecting, I get the, not a twitch, but like a sensation throughout my body, so I feel like, yes, I'm connecting, nice. strong words and messages come through, very powerful, nice. and then I always say in my head, well, Suzanne asked for signs, so I want, you know, so I ask for signs, and sometimes the signs come through very, very clearly, and other times they don't, so then when they don't, in my head I think, well, I've got quite an imagination, and maybe I made up that meditation I heard this morning, or two weeks ago, and so I'm kind of stuck because every time I get the voices in my head, I'm always 100% sure that it is, for example, Archangel Michael, or one time I thought it was Wayne Dyer, and it was a totally different voice, a jolly, funny, um, fatherly voice, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is Wayne, but then I asked for a sign and I haven't gotten it, so you always say to look within your heart and to feel, like does this feel right, and it always feels right, but yep. then here I am a few weeks later thinking, hmm, maybe I'm misjudging myself, so where do I go? Are you asking every time for a sign? Um, most of the time because I'm nervous that I'm making it up. In okay. My head. All right. This is... Oh. The guides are playing with you a little bit here is what I sense. You know in your heart this is real. The signs are to validate the feeling. Once you've gotten your validation... Now you know, this is how Archangel Michael feels to me, or this is how my loved one across the veil feels to me. I don't test my Susan every time she comes. I don't test Brenda every time she comes. I certainly don't test Archangel Michael every time. I know how they feel. Here they are. They've shown themselves to me. This is what I would recommend for you. Trust your heart. The trust is the greatest part of the journey. All right? And sometimes we don't get the answer because there's a reason we're not supposed to get it. In this case... It, oh, I see a hammer hitting you on the head. <laughs> how, how much is it going to take until you truly get out of the head and trust your heart? Oh, so it's a matter of trust. Absolutely. That's, that is, in fact, that was either the message that from my guides this morning or the day before, all about the trust. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, do you have time for one more question or no? I better honor those who've been waiting quite a while and move on, all right? Sounds good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. So, Christy, welcome to the show. Hi. Thank you. Um, I have a question about a mom's intuition. So, my 80-year-old mom is struggling in her grief because my brother, who's 43, unexpectedly died about 15 months ago. And she says that her mom's heart tells her he's not settled yet and she'll know in her heart when, when he's at peace. And I've listened to a lot of your podcasts and I know you say there's an understanding on his part once he crosses the veil. I'm just, can you talk a little bit about why there, is there a valid reason that her mom's intuition might feel that way? There's a valid reason why a mom might feel that way. 
And it's just that worry about someone that you can't check on as much as you'd like to. Please assure your mom, as I assure everyone, that our loved ones who pass are fine. And our love and our prayers for them that they settle in are very helpful. But they are completely surrounded by love across the veil. So her worry is certainly not going to help her grief. And that she can let that go. And that will actually make it easier for her to sense his presence. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Bye-bye. Bye. Okay. Let's move on here. I got to read here. Daphne. Daphne, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Thank you. For that. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. I'm writing your name on one of my drawing slips here. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, I can't believe I got through. Okay. Um, it's an honor and a pleasure to be speaking to you. Um, I am, um, definitely guided. Um, I, uh, you know, I live a life of coincidences that are not coincidences at all. And, um, I call them God winks and, um, so I live a life of God winks, and I, I know I'm connected. I, I, uh, uh, messages uh, come to me through dreams, um, through, I mean, I don't want to say voices in my head, <laughs> you know what I mean? but um, voices in my head, <laughs> you know? Um, so I know, I know I'm definitely guided, okay? That, that, that's, you know, that's not the issue. The, the issue is, my love life, Suzanne, has been non-existent for decades, and I know I have a team. As a matter of fact, I just named them um, a couple of days ago, um, but I was wondering uh, if, Sanaya, what your team thinks about my love life. Can I ask that? That is another personal message, isn't it? They like to keep things general. But first of all, let's go back to the connected and synchronicities. That's a sign for anybody that you're just in the flow, that you are listening to nudges, noticing snags, things that snag your attention from the spirit world, even if you don't realize that's what's going on. So your life is flowing other than the way you feel it should be. And truly, relationships and connection is such a big part of why we're here the guides, what they're actually saying is, this is your greatest opportunity. They're showing me, number one, to trust the flow. And number two, to work with them, to increase your connection with them, to ask more about this whole issue. Why is who I think is the right person for me not in my life right now and what's coming down the pike? I should ask my team those questions. Absolutely. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Darn. You were hoping for that crystal clear answer, but they're showing I, it. I, I, I my, my team's not guiding me to my twin flame. I thought maybe your team was. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those great life path moments. I have to share with everybody, you remind me of a story, Daphne of this woman that came to me for a reading and we brought through her husband very clearly. It, there was no doubt it was him. And he said, when you're ready, I want you to feel free to move on, to get married again. I want you to have love in your life again, even though it won't be the same as what we had. It'll be different, but it's love. Do you know, she came back to me a year later and she said, Suzanne, I need a reading and I need it soon. And I said, well, I'm not doing repeat readings, but what's up? She said, well, my husband said me to, told me to date again and I've dated and well now there are two men who want to marry me and I want him to tell me which one. <laughs> oh wow. <laughs> and I said you know I'm not going to do that reading because and this is for everybody and you too Daphne these decisions about our love life they are huge major life lessons they lead to some of our greatest lessons and so these are the kind of decisions that we have to learn to make by trusting our own heart. There's that issue of trust again. So work with your own team. They'll guide you as far as they can. But mostly it's ask them the question, is there anything I need to know now about why I am single at this time in my life? Okay? Okay. Thank you. It's a pleasure and an honor. 
You're welcome. Pleasure is mine. Bye bye. Okay, I believe this says Julie. It does. So, Julie, welcome to the show. Hi. Um, thank you so much. I have a question. Um, several people in my family have passed, and they've always come to visit. Sometimes in dreams. Sometimes you can just feel them in the house. That kind of thing. Um, right. However. I have never had any instance of my mother coming by. And I'm just wondering, is there a reason when people get older, we had a really tumultuous and difficult relationship, would there be a reason if someone passed that they just weren't ready to be back? Or I'm just trying to understand, because, I mean, I had, there was everyone that, I had a lot of difficult relationships. Let me put it like that. My ex-husband, et cetera, et cetera. But they will come and visit. But I just haven't seen my mom, and it worries me a little bit that, one of, you know, I just so what, I'm, what I'm seeing is she's well taken care of. I see arms coming out as if to say wrapped, enveloped in love. But I also see this hand on a dial as if to say, again, it's a matter of frequency and matching, being able to sense her. The others who come to you come because they see you'll be able to see them. They're getting through very clearly. But there may be an issue with you're just not able to tune into her particular frequency. There is a feeling that a medium would be able to connect with her. So it's not that she doesn't want to. And we continue to work on our issues across the veil. In fact, one of the most common signs or symbols I see are hands moving out from the eyes, opening up wide as if to say, my eyes have been opened across the veil. And usually our loved ones are very eager to talk to us and tell us the things that they've learned once they get to the other side. So don't give up on your mom. To say she's still working on things could very well be accurate, but understand that time doesn't work the way it does here across the veil. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, thank you so much for that um, clarity. I appreciate it. Thank right. you. You're welcome. Just hope it's helpful. All righty. It is. All right. Bye-bye. So let's see. Alba. Alba, you're on the air. Thank you so much, Suzanne. God bless. Um, this, <laughs> um, this may be the last time that uh, we can directly call you on this show. My understanding is that Unity Online Radio will end. Is that correct? Well, it's correct that the show is ending, but I have a new platform I'll be able to broadcast from, and we will be able to take callers. It might be a little bit more challenging than here where I see all the callers. I'll be able to just answer the phone when it rings. Everybody else is going to go to voicemail or get a busy signal or something, but I'll take one at a time and you will be notified about when that is coming up. If you go to SuzanneGiesman.com slash podcast Yay. and fill in the form yeah. to be notified when I'm going to do a live show. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for this important information. I appreciate that. And thank you for doing your best to continue with this other way of communicating with others, uh, Suzanne. And the question that I have uh, for Sanaya could Sanaya please speak to the complexities one can find in family relationships, oh. including the distance that one must sadly set sometimes to care for one's own well-being and honor one's soul journey, and conversely, to honor the distance that a family member sets who is not yet ready to co-nurture a deeper, fuller, loving relationship. Yes. As I mentioned with the previous caller, and I'm tuning into the team now to make sure the words come through adequately, relationship is the greatest opportunity for the soul in a human body. Rest assured that all souls never lose awareness of who we are as souls temporarily in a body. But this awareness gets lost to us sometimes. We don't realize that we're connected when we're in our human roles. And so it is through relationships, through the ups and the downs of the relationships that we seek clarity, seek answers, seek 
a greater connection. And that often leads us to this spiritual path of rediscovering who we are. So the distance that you speak of in relationships, I come upon this all the time. We deal with it in our own family, and it can be very frustrating at the human level, but it brings us right back to that issue of trust again. Trust that each person is on their own path. Send them love no matter what from the soul level and continue to trust and communicate with your loved ones at the soul level if they're unable to meet you at the human level. Okay? Thank you so very much. God bless you and all the best. You're welcome. I hope that's helpful. I know it can be so hard when we're dealing with people that, that see things differently than we do, but at the same time, know that our souls are just fine. I'm going to be sharing a photo, a drawing that I asked a friend, a dear friend of mine to make to explain how we see each other as souls. I'll be sharing that Tuesday night in my monthly connection webinar. And it really has changed everything for me and the way I approach other humans here. It's, it's just a lovely imagery. All right. That was Alba. So we're going to move on to Joel. I think we can take one more caller. We have Joel, then I'll get to Deb, there probably will be time for one more person at 816-251-3555. But for now, Joel, you're on the air. If you can hear me, Joel, say hello. I'm not hearing anything. So I'm going to put you on hold. And go on to another person. If you're still on the line, I'll try again in a minute. So, Deb, welcome to the show. Hi, Suzanne. Thank you for taking my call. I have so much respect for you. I really appreciate it. I have a question about when I meditate and seem to have difficulty contacting my spirit guides. And I wondered if you could give me some ideas on how to do it differently, that it would work out better for me. Well, tell me what you're expecting. Well, I ask them to send me a sign, you know, like whatever I'm asking for, whether it's, um, you know, faith in finding a new job or whatever it is, and I ask them to give me a sign. And sometimes I even ask for a name, or, but I just, I'm not getting any kind of feedback, so I don't know if I'm, what I'm doing, um, but I could do it better. So as I tune in now to my guides asking this question, they ask for you to be less specific in trying to tune in to them, to see them, to, to know them personally. They say that all guides' main goal is to literally do that, to guide you. So you might want to try my practice that I have in a video called Sip of the Divine. Are you familiar with that one? Yes. Yes, and I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. Let me tell those of you who don't know, go to YouTube and look up SIP, Sip of the Divine. And that practice has you asking one question each time you sit, a specific question. And you can be as generic as, what is it I need to know today? And the guides are saying they love to work with you this way. Because rather than what do you look like, what's your name, they're able to help you in your day-to-day -day life here, which is their role. So asking a question such as, what is it I need to know today, is really good. Not yeah, I, actually tried that. I actually tried that last night when I was meditating, what do I need to know? But I just didn't, maybe I didn't give it long enough, I don't know. Okay. Then we're going for a feeling and Many times you'll get an answer right away, but the way the guides work, if you're not truly clairaudient and don't exactly hear them right away, watch for images that show up in your mind. And then the next day or following your meditation, if you, next day, if you meditate at night, watch for things that snag your attention. Something just grabs your attention. Pull the thread by saying, why did that just catch my attention? Does this have the answer I'm looking for? And you're asking that of your guides on the fly as you're walking around and say, is this related to what I need to know? It's an ongoing interaction where the answers might not always come right in meditation. 
Okay? Okay. Thank you, Suzanne. You're welcome. All right. You take care. Okay. And thank you. I am going to try one more time with Joel. Joel, we couldn't hear you last time. I've clicked you. It shows you're on the air. Can you hear me now? We can't hear you. I'm so sorry. Okay. Well, we have talked to everybody else, so I'm going to put him back on hold there. And this is a good time to do my drawing then because we're pretty close to the end of the program. I have my little slips of paper here, and I'm shuffling them with my eyes closed. And we're going to have a drawing, and the name who comes up is Alba. Que bueno. She won the drawing. So, Alba, go to my website at the back, the contact page or the connect page and reach out to my assistant through the email address there. That's the alarm to do the drawing. And we will give you your choice of one of my online courses because that's the goal to show everybody you can do this too. So we have a minute and a, half, a minute to go. I'm going to tune into my guides and ask them what we should end with here. They give me a big lip twitch and say, Trust was the issue that came up so much today. And the greatest thing they'd like you to trust today is that you truly are never alone. Why is that? Because this source that we spoke of earlier, this white light that flows through us is consciousness. And you are consciousness or awareness in expression. You are here to enjoy Everything that life has to offer and the challenge is when so many of you are going through struggles, we wonder what is to enjoy. May your connection with your guides grow ever stronger. Sit regularly in the silence and ask, show me that I am guided. Show me that you are with me and feel what you feel in the heart. This is a journey of getting out of the head into the heart and knowing you're part of one big web connecting everything and everybody. That's what the synchronicities show us. Thank you all for calling in today. One more show with Radio Unity next week. I'll see you back here. In the meantime, have a great week.